You there, Tim? Yep. Got him. Nice. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> oh, I almost got to the wolfie yeah. in the face hole. <laughs> <laughs> Big bites. Big bites. <laughs> okay. See you later. Oh boy, he is. Oh boy. Down there. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Look at that shark in. He's going, isn't he? He is out of here, boys. I knew it because he came right under the boat right away. Oh, yeah. I'm like, yeah, he's he's still very much green. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Now he's running at you. Yep, now he's coming right back at us. He's trying every trick in the book. He's jumped, he's ran, he's... So have you done this before, Fred? Uh, this is my first time I'm making an attempt at it. I wanted to be... flips it. I wanted to be a professional fisherman at one point in time, but I had to work for a living, so... Yep. You know, that's how it goes when you can't catch them. Yep. You just gotta net You gotta them. coach them. Fish? I don't know. Looks like it. Yeah. Excellent. Bring them right. in. Let's give See, him I'm a, not retarded. Let's give him the death <laughs> stick. Oh, yeah, I'll show the you the stick. Wow. Way to go, buddy. <laughs> that was awesome. That was one of the best fights I've had in a long time. Hey, guys. Thanks for joining us today. We're down on the Rogue River. We got some special guests with us. We got Big Fred. I'm in Oregon. Yeah. Patrick. Yep, hi there, I'm Patrick Hollinger. I own Eagle Bay Lodging and Fishing here in Gold Beach, Oregon. Yep. And Freddie, uh, what do you do? Uh, design fishing tackle for a living. Douglas Rods is our game. So yep. Tim also works with us and Salmon Trout Steel Hutter as well. Yep. And uh, yeah, we're here on Oregon's Rogue River and we're uh, fishing for Spring Chinook off the hook been good spinning anchovies yeah yeah we have a good good system working here it's we got wolfie with us yeah behind the camera <laughs> yeah we've got a nice spread of these uh, douglas rods here behind the boat you know we're we're sitting on anchor for these fish as uh, they're coming in just you know probably this morning and last night from the ocean and yep. we're getting ahead of them we we like to anchor there in what we call the fish highway we have our anchovy spread that we uh, make them spin look like a crippled bait and bounce them behind the boat, and we wait for these fish to show up, and they'll show up in waves. And uh, yep. when they do, it's a it's a pretty vicious bite, and um, they go run <laughs> down the river about ballistic. as fast as they yeah. can. <laughs> Anchovy on crustini. It's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Don't candy coat it; they kick your butt. <laughs> Ooh, baby, there you go. It's running. <laughs> Clicker off. Plenty of plenty of free, so if he wants to take off, he can. can grab that net we don't need to can. force him in. Freezing. So we try to get him up river from the boat. We'll let him turn once. Nice. He's still pretty green. Pretty green. Still pretty green, mm. but we'll. Feisty, all right. We'll just kind of, if we can sneak up on mm -hmm. him just a little bit. Yeah, and then just kind of ease them in. That one's kind of a little squirrely. <laughs> a little squirrely still. <laughs> He's wily. That was awesome. He's a wily one. A little, little awesome. squirrely. <laughs> secret squirrel. Not yet. Not quite yet. Well, he's, got a little... he's a little bit bigger one. Mm -hmm. So this is, you know, kind of been about average for these fish. Wow. We did two more cranks on that. There we go. He was I'm excited. Out. Patrick, yeah. I think you're just Super ugly. Excited. I'm not sure. They keep doing that every time you go for them. It's they weird. Do that. Let's see. Uh, actually, you're okay, Tim. This guy is just so he's he's turning, over, he's he's turning he's over on edge a little bit. Looks like it could potentially be another hatchery fish. Okay, nice. Perfect. Yeah, we got a keeper maybe? Let's see. What's a yeah. Oh, that's a hefty fish. Yeah. No, it's wild. It's wild. Is it a wild? I don't know. Let me see. Wild. Wild. Beautiful fish. Oh, wow. 
Wow, look yeah. at that beauty. Chrome, baby. Wild fish in the middle. Oh, oh, nice. And, and he's gone. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Well, Patrick's going to show us um, how we're fishing, how we're set up, the spread, and uh, the rig we're using to catch these spring chinook. This is the common rig setup here on the on the Rogue River for these spring chinook salmon. It's an anchovy that we put a nice uh, bend in, a few beads, and then uh, you know we do do a spinner blade uh, at the nose. And then you can see here, depending on the the flow of the current, depends uh, gives us the weight. Uh, that we want to use too so you know we're fishing in probably about you know two to three ounce water today and uh so you know this one's this one's ready to fish so i'll just kind of send this out behind the boat here and let the current you know help take it back and what you're really feeling for you want to you want to feel the bottom so we're essentially we're going to back bounce this you know back behind the boat you know anywhere from from 30 to, to 40 feet is is how we like to do it you know, we've got four of us on the boat here, so we've got a four rod spread. You know, we've got them on the inside, got them way out on the outside. So, you know, we're, we're really trying to corral these fish into our spread. And having the wider spread really helps us, you know, cover the channel, that fish highway that I was talking about earlier. Um, you know, and, and, and again, look, being able to look down river and being able to read the water correctly, you know, we, we want to fish the inside seams outside seams you know and sometimes even the really soft water on the inside you know those those fish will hang out over there as well and so you know we want to try to cover that fast water on the outside that slow water on the inside and then you know once we once we get our fish you know then we could really narrow it down and and pinpoint that that true fish highway so well, here we are we're we're balanced out now and you know we're just put in the rod holder and we wait for those waves of fish to come through, and and once it does, I mean, it'll 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 just start going like that, and they'll let the chaos ensue. One here, and one there. So far this morning, it's been a, been productive, and had a couple other wild fish on that we released at the boat, and um, you know, I I think where we're anchored up here and the spread we're running, we've got the fish highway covered. Yep. You don't need to drive wow, that one just... It's, it's on the plug. Are you swimming right at us here? Eight, eight plug. No, you don't. It's a... <laughs> we won't need to drop out. He's swimming right at us here, though. So what happened, you guys? Well, we're here eating some cookies that yeah. the legend Helen gave us. Oh, it's just a little guy anyways. Yeah, And, uh... <laughs> Lord and behold, we got salmons. Okay, move up, corner, corner hole, Leo. Is that a steelhead? That's a steelhead. Yeah. It is a steelhead. It's a run back. It's a, it's a steelhead. Oh, yeah. he twisted everything up. You know, so besides fishing out here on the Rogue River, there's there's many other attractions as you can see behind me here. Uh, you got Jerry's Rogue Jet Boats, the uh, the originals here. These guys, uh, they got these big tour boats. They fill them with people and they go up river. They get into the, the white water and the canyons and they go up to Agnes for a, a stop. They feed you up there at their lodge. And uh, I tell you what, if, if you're not fishing, you better be on one of those jet boats if you come to Gold Beach because that is one of the main attractions for coming here. It's fishing, it's jet boats, it's beaches, it's hiking, it's perfect. This is a threader mm -hmm. and we're gonna go right up the uh, anchovies butt here and we're gonna bring it right out the mouth just like that. Mm -hmm. Then we, our leader, we've got a loop tied on the end of it and we'll just feed that loop through the anchovy. So the loop now is coming up through the butt of the anchovy. We'll take our treble hook and we'll feed the loop 
into the treble hook here and loop it around. One more prong here. Cinch it tight. And uh, there's an odd hook to every treble hook. So you have two hooks that point up the sides of the eyelet. Then you have one hook that this one hook points at the eyelet. These two point alongside the eyelet. So the opposite hook, the one that points directly at the eyelet is the one that we feed into the backbone. And we'll fit it in right here, just behind the anal fin of the anchovy. And we'll, we'll wrap the backbone. So you're grabbing the backbone like that. There's a sliding nose hook that we have here. And we'll, we'll slip that in. And uh, we'll pop it right into the back of the skull of this anchovy. And you don't want to bring the barb all the way through. You want that barb just to catch on that skull bone. And that's what gives it its, its grip. And then you can cinch it down, like so. And it'll uh, put a nice bend in this anchovy here. And it will spin like a drill bit once it uh, gets there in the water. And salmon can't resist. Let's go get another one. All right, Salmon thanks. candy. In this game, we've got, you know, a pretty confined space. We've got pretty, you know, very hot fish. We've recently <laughs> witnessed that with the last two fish. You got, you have to clear lines as things are going on and everything has to be in concert. So we got four bodies trying to be in a, about a four foot space back here. So teamwork is everything. Clearing rods, getting things set, person getting the net, person pulling the anchor, that's super important. Uh, not swinging into a potential boat or competitor that's sitting outside of you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Helen <laughs> Helen so yeah no I think you just have to because this fish that's over on this far rod bites and it swims through all these lines and goes over to their lines and then takes off that way so you can have seven other lines hung up in your line so you just really get right on it get things together and I think that's a real key in this uh, anchor springer fishery Hang on to him. Yep. Hang on. Oh, there he is. Now he's coming right up to the boat. What is it? This is exciting. What do you got this going, Nick? In action. Yep. All day we've. Uh, oh, I thought that was. Had all kinds of opportunities, and it's been so much fun. Got him right up to the boat. Oh, oh, look at that. Head it's shake, head inside. shake. Hey. Boy, it's fun, isn't it? Yes. Look yeah, this is what you're here for. 9642 MF. MF, Hard at yep. work. Hard at work, baby. Making it look easy. Look at it, there it goes. One more, one more turn on him. Come yep, first. he'll turn back one last time. They are tough I'm fish, man. I'm on it other way, so I'm not. Yeah. Okay. I just want to get them head first in here. We got to reel down on them. Oh, this is the one. Nope. Nope. <laughs> oh, yeah, you might be able to swing them back around here. Lift, lift, lift. Oh, that's a nice one. Well done. All How right. was that, brother? Right, he's in the net. Now he's he in the talk. net. Come now on. he can talk. Three All right. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so <laughs> much. Magic. Nice hey, job on the net, brother. Right. Way to go, Freddie. Yes. Way to go, boys. Put the spank down. Look at that. Okay, so what happened? You saw some rollers. We saw some rollers. It was time to get heightened alert. Got into position. Mm -hmm. What's this thing doing? And then the rod. Then the rod folded. It just nice soft bite. It, they showed us they were there. I'd like to leave more rods out, but we have a good chance of tangling. So we'll just go ahead and ease this one past and get dropped out. And get this motor started. You got to do all this by yourself usually, so... 
It's nice when you have a team that you can work together with. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna the drop. The team is working hard over here. We're gonna pull the anchor. Is it a wild? I don't know yet. I didn't, I was trying to look, I couldn't see. Get a good look at it. There we go. Hatchery. Thanks, thanks for joining us. Thanks for being with us today. We just wanted to kind of wrap up the day. We've had just a fabulous day. Everybody's on the Springers. Pat, Fred has got this system dialed. I mean, you've heard throughout the video, kind of explain what we're doing, how it's been going. Uh, we could show you the box, but we don't want to be too boastful. <laughs> it's been a very good day. So we want to thank these guys for bringing us out. We're going to do a little bit more tomorrow. Yep. See if we can't reproduce, but- uh, One more day of fun and excitement. Do. It's hard to reproduce a day like today. Yeah. I mean, today's been a day. So Some crazy stuff. Happening. Yeah. So look forward to, to tomorrow and we'll have more action for you. Inside. Up, inside got the Oh, it's getting, there it goes. There it is. Double. Natural double, boys. He got oh. away. No, 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 no he's no, there. Get him. Get, get him. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There he is. Well, this morning's off to a great start. Yeah. Um, just got the rods out, just getting light out. We hooked up, the boat next to us hooked up. So uh, it's pretty exciting. What's happening, Tim? Just letting them hang there while we clear lines, guys. Early morning bite. We got a double with the boat next to us. Perfect timing, now he's going out. Nice, good take. That was awesome. Banged it a couple of times and then just buried it. So I'm just keeping a bend in the rod and letting everybody clear. Clear the decks. Clear the decks. Ready when you are, Fred. Gotcha. Just come up and over me, Tim. Yep, that's what I was trying for. So like, uh... How's that one feel, huh, buddy? Yeah. I, Why don't you tell us a little bit about that rod there? Yeah, I mean, these rods are just a key part of this whole program. I mean, look at they're soft. It keeps those hooks in. Nice bend in it. Douglas rod, LRS. LRS is baby. 9642 MF. Yep. Beautiful rod. Ooh, we're getting some head shakes. Six. I'm sorry, 10 oh, six. Littler guy, but... So with that uh, that action, that really helps. Ab absolutely, it's, it's nice. When they strike. It's yeah. a softer tip. We really get a good read. You know when how the baits are working. You get to see the bites. You get to see the line rubs real easy. Look at that. Look at how but it then, absorbs uh, the head shakes. Yeah, it absorbs the head shakes. And look at that Whoa. thing. Whoa! Oh man, look at it. See you later, Charlie. Holy smokes. What a, what a great thing about these springers. They're just, They're just super strong, cold just water awesome. fish. Yep. And uh, yeah, there's just no quit in them ever. Got big Fred on the net this morning. Hope I don't mess it up. Yeah, our, our net jockey. <laughs> our net jockey. Mr. Mistakeyaki, net jockey. No, Mr. Mistakeyaki. <laughs> as, as, as he would say, it's a little one. It's a little guy. Oh, it's just a little one. Almost every fish he's like, it's a little one. That's what I have to tell myself. <laughs> <laughs> so that way, you know, something bad happens, ah, that was a jack. <laughs> Their outside rod and our inside rod, what does that tell you about that Whoa, fish highway? Yeah, yeah, very spread right. out this morning. There's a, it's a big highway this morning, fellas. Oh, Look at he's still going. That was a 9,900 yard or 100. Look at that. <laughs> okay. And we're dropping on them too. Get it up yep, yep, yep. Trying. Yep. Need a wire peg? Jesus. Look at that run. That's another good run. That was another 45 footer. 
fighting those fish for 10 minutes already. Hell of a fight. I thought we were out. Back around. Back around. Hang on. I'd rather it just come back down to me. Just, yeah. I'll let you guys know that. Like, I don't like getting them below. Yes, yeah, swimming into the net, right? Much rather have it go up there. Mm -hmm. Okay, now lift. Yeah, get it right down to the tip. Get it coming at me. Gotcha. That's nice. preferable. That's my nice. preference. That's a good <laughs> That was an awesome fight. Uh, that doesn't look too small to me. No way. <laughs> Patty P. Good job, guys. That was awesome. Right good job, on. Wolfie. So, post mortem, <laughs> fish is dead. We use a, a diver's or a kayaker's loop, how they carry their fish in the sea. We've got a leash on here. Patrick got this at the sportsman show in Portland. And then a little thing that I've been doing most of my life is got a tail rope with a hangman's noose and tighten that around the wrist. And you can pick up the fish like this and I get the fish clipped on and secured. I've got it in two places, so it's not going anywhere. So the first thing I'll do is I'll get a knife. Make sure I got that fish securely. Yep. To where the gills enter the top of the throat, I'll make a good slice in there and you'll see right away. It'll start bleeding out pretty hard. And that's the, for a premium fish like this, especially, this is the most important thing you can do after it. Yeah, the TV one is getting the blood out of the meat. Yep, and so then you can turn it around, let that hang, and you'll see that big trail of blood come out of there. And if you lift it, it's just leaking blood. And as you hold it here, gravity takes over. And that fish, every once in a while, just lift it out of the water so the coagulation keeps going. And it'll bleed, bleed like a stuck pig. Bleed it for about five minutes or until the water runs clear. No more blood coming out of it. And then, uh, yeah, straight on ice. Well, another fish on. How was that flat line and takedown? <laughs> it was good. Go over by Tim there, please. It was good, okay. Fired up. Scoot around. Yep, this is awesome. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, uh, yeah, look at that rod. Coming right up to the boat Coming here. Coming right up. He'll figure it out in a second. Yeah, he's he nowhere near done. Oh, oh, Nicholas. How big? Wolfie. That's a good one. 30? Hey, get that rod tip up. Come on, Wolfie. Ooh, he's That's a good too. one. Okay, see what we're gonna do this time. Go. All right, Nicky. Got him. Okay. All right. Wolfie. That nice motor work, brother. Ooh, he's just woke up in the net. Right on. Just a, just a okay, here we go, Fred. A nice hatchery fish this morning. Really, right now, it's almost unfreezeful. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying a new technique today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is that how you do it? No, you're holding it upside down. Oh, yeah, this there way. There you go, there you go. Got it, okay, okay. Yeah. like there this. There you go. If you can't laugh at yourself, why not? Yeah, why bother? Just call, call it quits early on. Go ahead, just untie it, and then uh, just slide us back, slowly. Is it pulling pretty good, Fred? Right now, he's swimming coming, coming at the at boat. Us. Clear, Pat. Okay, thank Tim. Teamwork is everything, as we can once again show you guys with another fish. Yep. Come on, I don't want to flush him out. Flush him out. There we go. Yeah. Well, motor flush him. 
getting them into position. Certainly one of the things in fighting a fish that, that I, us as rod makers, we try not to get people to do this and yep. just use everything down yeah. here nice and tight. Right, because that'll change the action of the rod and potentially cause it to break, as I've learned many yeah. times. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a keeper? <laughs> uh, we have a fin or a fin? Do we have a keeper? Hold on. There's always the... Uh... I know, I don't see it yet either. Got a fin. I'm Patrick Hollinger, owner and operator of Eagle Bay Lodging and Fishing in Gold Beach, Oregon. I run it with my family. My wife's Kimberly Hollinger, and my kids are Emily and Anderson Hollinger. And we purchased Eagle Bay. Gosh, a couple days was, uh, uh, it's been five years, a couple days ago. And uh, it's a 110 year old salmon cannery. It was called Smith's Cannery. And I uh, know that, did uh, all the research on it. The Alligator historical attention. museum here in, in Gold Beach was kind enough to let me go through all their records and boxes of photos in yeah. the attic and until I was able out, to huh? figure out, yeah. you know, a little bit about yeah, what this cannery good. is, oh, what yeah, history and long. part it played here in Gold Beach. And it's called Smith's Cannery, uh, started by Ike Smith. And it was a, again, a salmon cannery, but then it was also a commercial mink farm. So it was a zero waste cannery. So they had, after cleaning the fish in the cannery, heads, scraps, tails, et cetera, et cetera, they would then feed to all of the mink in the cages, and then uh, then they would sell off the mink for, for their coats. Um, so pretty pretty brilliant mind to have a double operation to take advantage of, of everything that it was offered to them. Uh, back in uh, 1950s, the original cannery that sat on the property was was torn down and the bigger shop slash you know fish processing plant was built and then uh, also the second floor of the original uh, cold storage and ice house uh, of the cannery uh, was was put on as well and uh, it was actually pretty cool during my renovation of the old ice house we had it completely gutted to the studs and older gentleman came in and he just walked in through the door and I was like, whoa, 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 stop, you're going to fall through the floors. All the timbers, floor joists, everything completely rotted out. It was, it was just really in bad shape. And I remember him coming in and he goes, I remember when this was a cannery in cold storage. He goes, last time I was in this room, which we call the ca our cannery cabin now, he goes, there are about 2,000 king salmon on the floor in this room getting ready for process. And I was just like, gosh, I couldn't even imagine being able to see that back in the day when the cannery was rocking and rolling full full steam ahead. So a lot of history with the place. We sit right at the mouth of the Rogue River. All of our cabins, beautiful views of the Rogue Bay, the ocean, the bridge. One other neat tidbit about uh, our, our cannery and, and when it was installed, which we were, or, or built was, you know, I kind of want to think it was from photo evidence around World War One. And uh, again, the gentleman was pretty creative on, on his marketing, advertising, and uh, if, if you've been down on the Rogue River and, and you've caught a 30 pound plus salmon, you take it to one of the local uh, hotels and they give you a trophy button for it. And anyways, that was actually started at, uh, at Smith's Cannery. Ike Smith actually started that a long time ago. And uh, ice was a very rare commodity back in, the, back in those days. And uh, so in order to entice people to come and bring his cannery, their, their fish, um, he would give them a little, a little button, you know, a little put in your hat, put in your, your lapel, um, and, uh, you know, show your friends whenever you got back home, hey, I got a, you know, 30 plus pound fish. And uh, anyway, so it was a great marketing ploy to get everybody to come bring him their fish and in turn he would give them back smoked salmon or canned salmon something that didn't require ice to travel back home with and uh you know maybe one of these days you know i'll get creative and and create up a another new pen and bring it back to the to the lodge and um you know we we cater to a lot of fishermen at our at our lodge there and it would be nice for them to have something to take home and remember their experience out here fishing with us and um 
you know, nobody ever forgets a big salmon, especially when they have a trophy to brag about. So, um, again, our place is, uh, it's very historical. My wife and I, we rented, rented everything. We, we took all the buildings down to the studs, cleaned them up, renovated, made them nice and clean again. And uh, again, cleanliness is a, a huge part of our program. And we, we don't want to have a reputation for being a, a kind of a gross place to stay because there's, there's plenty of that around and I don't want to be affiliated with that at all. But uh, anyways, yeah, come check us out. It's uh, eaglebaylodgingandfishing.com. You could check out pictures of our rooms and cabins. Uh, we've got all of our lodging and fishing package rates. And then uh, also you could see some old historical photos of the cannery um, and, uh, you know, read our, our history that I put together. And uh, anyways, give me a call, 541-556-5128. Again, I'm Patrick Hollinger, and uh, I look forward to hearing from you guys. Thank you. Hey, how's it going? We're, uh, we're going to go take a look around. We've been fishing here for a while. Want to go see some new scenery, play the tide a little bit, and uh, pick up anchor and go down river and see if we can find some tidal fish. Brand new one. Well, we just went for a nice little boat ride down river here. Take a look at things. Uh, we still have incoming tide here for the next couple hours, so we figured since we were not in tide water earlier, we figured uh, we'd come down in here and get a little bit closer to these new fish coming in on this tide. And anyway, as you can see down here, there's a little bit more boat activity. Uh, a lot of other guides and private boaters anchored up around here. And uh, all hoping for the same thing. It's, it's pretty spread out down here with this water level, but uh, Hopefully I got a pretty good hunch where we're anchored here and maybe we'll uh, find another fish. Nice. Which way is he? He's running to the bank, he's running. He's coming right up at us here. Oh shit, I got you. Ooh, that's a big one. Ooh, you're gone. Oh, that is a big one. That's a big one. Oh baby, there he goes. Whoa, there's a Mondo run. You want me to do this? Drop us? Ooh, 90. You drop us, I'll run the motor. 100. Yeah, buddy. This is a big fish here. There's your 30. Beautiful. Beautiful. So we haven't been at this new spot very long and uh my hunch was right we yeah ready. yeah we tried we got uh, a nice big fish on here guys we're dropping yeah okay. it's coming up and around to you fred Real big. Gnarly. Is that gnarly? All right, he's below us now. Let's drift down after Captain him. Captain Gnarly. Oh man, look at him go way up there. Look at those head shakes too. Oh, violence. I just do not want to get anywhere near that guy's anchor line. I know, I'm gonna get. Stay inside. I want to go outside of it because of the shoal. Okay, all right, all right, I understand. I understand. You just catch your fish. Yeah, let me do the heavy work. Yeah, Fine, we'll do then. the heavy work. This is the heavy work. That's a big fish. <laughs> yeah. All right, you got 10 feet here. Coming you let right me know on. when your arms get tired, Pat. Oh, they don't get tired. <laughs> That's Not what I thought. Douglas rods. Oh yes, that's here, a big one. Here. I got it. I can't reel anymore on that. That's it, what it'll, was happening. It, it'll it'll pop free. Fun. It'll pop free. Just just snap it. It'll Jeez, oh, it's huge. Look at him. 
Ooh, he's hatchery too. I see no happy place in. Okay, slow down, Fred. Yeah, you're. He's just surfing, not turning, not even fighting. He's just sailing. He's trying to pull him out here. Yeah, he's trying to get his head turned and he'll come running right back to you. Go upriver, Fred, a little bit. Tired? No. Oh. No. <laughs> Have fun. You're gonna do what he tells you to do. Yeah. This He's got to be getting a little tired though. This fish is heavy. Yep. Um, you get lucky right here. Get him in there. Get him in there. There he is. Come here, baby. <laughs> Sneak oh. attack. Hi, yeah, baby. I got him. Okay. Yeah. Catch. Yes. Yep, he's Get him in here. Holy oh, cow. Oh, there's your 30. There we go. <laughs> Woo, brother. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's, that is a pig. That's a 30, 35 pound spring ish. Look at how salmon. thick he is. Look at that. Said, I mean, he's that like thick. That before, yeah, fellas? that's unbelievable. I mean, look at that. I'm not making that up. Did look at that. He's that thick. Or did he win we weren't in our spot for what? 20 minutes? Yeah, 20 right. minutes maybe. Yeah, Punch was right. I mean, just look at how deep and, you know, look at the shoulders yeah, of that thing. That thing is just... It is just wide a, as can be. Amazing. That is how God designed very, them. Very I like to say. Yeah, that's just a so beautiful, beautiful yep. specimen here. Yep. All right, guys. Here we are. We're wrapping up day two. It's been just awesome between the camaraderie, the laughs, the fishing's been fabulous. Pat will tell you a little bit about what we got going on at his place. It's just this is just a really good deal so pat tell them a little bit last bit about your place and how this works yeah so down here in the southern oregon coast gold beach so i've got an old salmon cannery that i turned in my little fishing lodge and uh, i do some guided fishing trips along with a couple of other buddies of mine who uh, you know guide with me out of the lodge as well and uh yeah come on down we'll put yeah. you up we'll take you fishing we'll show you a good time you know we will we'll laugh yep. we'll joke yeah, you know, and uh, like like I tell everybody, the fish is the bonus. Yeah, so, the good time you know, is is worth fun. it. Yeah, and these guys have this stuff dialed. Trust us, we just spent two days with them, and it's it's the real deal. The real deal. <laughs> Uh, gutted the fish first, took yeah. its head. Yeah. We've uh, been cutting all the collars and stuff off the head pieces here. And then what I like to do is I like to take about, you know, a couple inch pieces here. I'll stake them like so. Get, it, get yourself, make sure you get yourself a nice serrated knife. They just glide through these fish like butter. So we'll stake out our pieces here. And then I'll borrow this other knife from, from Fred here in a second. And uh, then we fillet our, our steaks and they turn out to be just, you know, nice pieces for for person. Do you have that other knife bay? There we go. So we'll show you here. This comes out pretty slick so you can watch this. Knife point, you just kind of follow right in at the backbone here and you can follow it all the way across. And then you follow the backbones Push down with your blade, come right through the skin. And then you can curl right around the spine. And then you follow the rib bones down, just press. And boom, perfect piece. Just like that, you get all the meat. Look at that. 
That's all the meat off of that, that side there. So that's what I'll anyway, it's just a nice, simple, efficient way to maximize getting all of your meat off the fish. I mean, you these fish are so beautiful, why would you want to waste any of it? No, I'm not going to You just do the same thing. You just comb right up. No, I'm going home. Curl right around the spine. These guys got to go home in the morning. So right down the rib bones here. You will. Just happened? like that. You get all wow. the meat off of that thing. Yeah. You can see right through it. That's amazing. So, there we go. Huh? We Practice makes perfect. The tail cut, it's actually, it's my favorite cut. What they buy and uh, the this is this is how I get we we continued staking out our fish here and uh, so now we'll we'll comb out these uh, tail fillets so the tip of the knife you can just follow the backbone all the way down push along those spine bones come all the way up like so and we can just comb all the way down the rest of those rib bones there just like so. so. Poke it out. Keep combing. And then you can just take this, run it the rest of the way down. I like to comb the slump, a little bit of whatever slime or water off. And there you go, perfect tail fillet, just like that. Yeah. And you just do the same thing on the other side here. Put the pressure up against the backbones. And comb it all the way up. And you just comb it right around the spine, all the way down the remainder of those rib bones here. Comb it off those bones. Flip it over real quick. Nice little filet right there.